Right folks, here we go again. Uh, probably think I'm glued to this table here, but I haven't been in and out of the house a few times from the start of this. Um, first off, thanks to Michael for all his time, hard work and energy for this, and uh, his sidekick Franco, he's only on day release because the yellow bus is coming around shortly. But uh, we're going to start off with the Van the Baileys now, another family that the Wright brothers have put me into. Um, Short background, a few years ago the Wrights decided they wanted to try a bit of more distance racing, middle distance racing and, and they wanted to have a crack at the Midlands National. They've been flying the sprint pigeons for years and done everything basically that there was to do with them and wanted a bit more of a challenge. Um, and decided to go for these Wanderbilly pigeons and ended up going to Ponderosa where the main source and got Cohen Minder out and uh, direct Wanderbilly's. So, um, within five years, this is a phenomenal record that they've produced, um, within five years of joining and entering in Midlands now still, they had won it twice uh, and taken every single position in the first 20 bar second and 18th. I think that's some of those positions too were doubled up, you know, maybe two ninths or two tens. Phenomenal racing for a new team of pigeons that they were just into new club they were just into to go and compete in that kind of competition that there is in the Midlands National. Um, for example, they were flying that well, they had a pigeon there called Star. Star was third national. Um, and again, the boys being who they are and not looking for publicity. Uh, Star was third national and beaten by a pigeon flying about 40 miles less and beaten on a decimal for second place. So, you know, this is the kind of extremes they're up again. They're not dead on the lane of flight, their birds have to work to get to them. But this particular lane of pigeons, and, and he, Roy's a big man on wings and, and the shape of the wings and whatever, he, he taught me a lot about it. Another thing, I don't know whether other Van der Beely fans here have found this, but what he did tell me was in the first year or two they made a lot of mistakes. On the feeding, it took him a while to cop on. These Van der Beely pigeons, or this particular lane of Van der Beely pigeons, actually need to be kept pretty lean. Um, the young birds need the wings up around your feet when you're feeding them. Uh, they don't feed like the lean putting pigs where you can knock an ounce or an ounce and a quarter into them. Um, what we have found with these and through advice from Roy, 25 pigs will take about 23 ounces. Some people may find that hard to get their head around, but the type of the pigs and the constitution they have, well, uh, basically don't take my word for it, take the results for it. Um, First to 20th in the Midland National Bar 2 positions leaves you in a position where you kind of know what you're talking about. Never mind what Peter Martin says, I go on the record of right brothers and what they say. So, um, as I say, they've done all that and, and produced all these phenomenal performances with these pigeons and we decided to have a bit of a go at ourselves. A couple of years ago, my young lad come on board with me. He wanted something different, something on his own, something new. So we flew over to Roy and Molly and we seen these lean putting pigeons and in fairness tell them what they gave them for a present was as good as anything we bought and, and um, they've been very very good to me, two great mentors uh, and considering the health problems I've had, a bit like myself I have a slogan here, fly or die, people think it's because I'm you know, over hard on pigeons it's if I couldn't fly pigeons I would die cancer patients would understand that you need a, a goal, something to keep you going, something to one to live for. If I hadn't had the pigeons here, I don't think I'd have come through the cancer as well as what I've done. Uh, so that's where fly or die comes from. And um, with the rights, considering their own trouble that they've had, and the, they're none of us spring chickens anymore, to keep on knocking them down and knocking them down every year. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. I know Mike Lakin at the minute is pushing hard for Roy to read a book because the man is a walking encyclopedia on breeding pigeons and what way to go about it. His brother just knows nothing, only racing pigeons and hard to get winners. So, you know, anybody to listen to, listen to those that can back it up and prove it. So, we're going to start here. Um, don't know an awful lot about the background of these pigeons. As I said, they're Cohen Minderhood, Van der Beelies, and Van der Beelies Direct. They come, the main source, they come through Ponderosa. I know they've used Paul Kirk for a couple of crosses and went out and bought their own pigeons to bring in, but. Uh, what they've sent me is basically the cream of what they have. They have done all the spade work. I don't, can't take any credit for it. They've done all the spade work on these pigeons to find out the best lanes, what crosses were what and whatever. One thing I will say, phenomenal cross into the Van Leen putting pigeons. The national winner, one of the national winners is a, is a cross. Uh, so 
if you're looking at something different or you have Van de Beelies and want a sneaky cross in, them, I couldn't recommend anything better than Lee Putnam's. But back to the Van de Beelies, the first pitch I'm going to show you here is a pitch called Young Turbo. Uh, Young Turbo, as you'll see here, blue check cock, he has the turbo lane of the Van de Beelies through him. That's where the check comes from, and in Roy's estimation, putting the turbo lane into the, the, the birds that he had originally, the original Van de Beelies. Put about another 80 mile on the trip that they were getting and they were comfortable with it. Now, there is a nice pigeon. Typical of the Van der Beelies that Roy has. Not so many checks over there, I have to say. A lot of blues, blue white flights, but uh, these pigeons you see with the check in them will all have turbo through them. Uh, young Turbo here, he was ninth in Iceland on the day that the bullet won the Iceland, and between the two of them, they have won the trophy for the fastest combined velocity. This cock has produced phenomenal pigeons to finish. In the nice result as well. We're very lucky to get him, Roy, the gentleman that he is, said, Look, get him over with you before he's finished and take plenty of them. The first hen that I paired this cock to was a hen that I call Tusks. Tusks is the mother of Star, who we talked about previous. So there you've a ninth national, paired to the mother of a third national, but considering that the ninth national has bred five or six pigeons to be in the national result, I don't think you could any better. And if we get out the eyes, Michael, this is an eye that people want to look at. But again, lovely, typical buzzer, uh, typical uh, Van de Beely. The little trait that they have on the wing that I showed in one of the previous videos, uh, I don't know if you'll see it so well here, but basically on the very end of the back wing here, you can see a curl there. I'm trying to get an angle as you can see it. This is a wee trait that these pigeons have on Roy noticed. Um, it shows predominantly more on the hands, I think, but this thing, I don't know how well we can get into looking this, but there where my thumb is, when you do a lot of pins, when you pull that back, you have a bit of a gap. On these pins, it's a closed wing, completely closed. So, as I say, young turbo, nice pigeon, more importantly, has results and uh, produces. I think this lane is going to be an hour off for a long time. And as I should have said about him as Hallam, typical medium sized pigeon, look larger, actually they do look larger than what they are. Now right, this boy settles himself, getting on in years about this cock, um, again, Roy, a gentleman that he has sent this over to us. This is the bullet, their first national winner. Right. Again, beautiful head, lovely headed pigeon, nice eyed pigeon. Uh, has produced winners this cock. I uh, know he's up in years. We brought him over. I've just crossed him over again. Star, the uh, the mother of Star. Uh, this cock is on the ball, and I've heard him to Star's mother first. And uh, one egg is definitely filled to check it yesterday. So he's on his third hen here. Um, on the Billy Winger, what? Nice gaps at the end. All flights looking pretty much even. Roy emphasizes this on his own video. I don't know what way this is coming out on your side, Michael, but there, on the wing, this thing we're talking about, I don't know if you can see that, but pretty predominant here. And again, handle much later and much smaller than they look. You know, they look a bigger pigeon, but in the hand, they're pretty neat. Uh, wedge shape. This boy, you can't see it so much here, but this single flight in the tail, um, a lot of them carry that. But there you go. First... Midlands nice now. Well, they're eight brothers. Uh, after only two years of trying, I think that's uh, something to be proud of. That's not Franco with a change of clothes. That's Michael there doing Franco's job because he's out drinking tea at the moment. Right, a young guy cock this team. Um, Joby. The cub. Uh, he fancied this cock from the minute he got him and the minute we've seen him. And the boys actually have gifted this pigeon to him. He's called the producer. And I think he's well named because he is going to go on to produce our first young one of them last year. Four weeks running in the young bird uh, and the results. Uh, win as a race, was there to win the federation. Fool that he is over feeding, lost it on a bad trap. But this is going to be a, a good pigeon. This is going to be a good producing pigeon. Um, I don't want to go out of focus, Michael, but I'm trying to show this wedge shape. Big wedge shoulders down in the V of a single flight in the tail. 
but hopefully that's coming out there. Um, slightly longer than the other two cocks this, but uh, that's a, a fond of Bailey pigeons that we do carry a bit of length. There's our wing, nice gap in between the last flights for the air to flow through on the downstroke. Uh, not so much of a step now, middle distance pigeons. And here, Michael, don't know if you can see it, but here we have this curl on the wing here. Someone uh, actually emailed me after they seen the last video and said they had been doubt to their own pigeons and found this very predominant on the turbo line of Van der Beelis. But to say, young cock, this only a 13 pigeon. And we're not the only one that has done it with these pigeons. Uh, I, I just want to read a little letter that was sent to me from Roy, from a lady fancier in England who only started a couple of years ago, her and her husband. They went to the rates, bought uh, Van der Beelie pigeons, won the young bird average, and etc. in their club. The next year came out and done the same. Last year they sent over the results. Uh, I'll read you these results in a minute when we get finished looking at the pigeons because I think it's typical of the quality of these pigeons now for a pretty novice fancier to go out and do what this girl has done. And when I really read the results, you'll maybe understand what I'm talking about why I say the rates have done the speed work. Uh, you're cutting out an awful lot of work, an awful lot of years work. Go to these boys, listen to them, listen to what they're telling you, because they have done all the hard work. They know their pigeons inside out. Roy's, you know, 50 years of pigeon man. There we go, beautiful cock, the producer. Oh, you're back, Franco. One hand as long as the other, no tea. Thank you. Now, I'm, uh, I know I'm big enough Roy here and Molly, which is no bad thing. But sometimes you got to stick your neck out on the lane. And, uh, I said to Paul Swindell on a week email there the other day, I like a challenge. I like sticking my neck out sometimes because it can put you right or put you wrong, make a fool of you or make a hero out of you. I have christened this little pigeon Future Girl because I really do believe that this pigeon is going to be producing a lot of winners. Just something about her from the moment I've seen her. Uh, the reason I'm saying about sticking your neck out, a few years back, I found in her own club, I just started and like all new fanciers I give them a helping hand and give them a few young ones or whatever. I uh, listened to a couple of boys in the club complaining about the praise money. Uh, I think we're going back maybe about seven, eight years and I said listen don't grieve about the money. I have a kill of young ones coming out of the nest. Whoever makes the best offer on them I'll put the money on the table. You can race for the money, I won't partake in the race, but it'll stop you whinging about money because pigeon racing to me isn't about money, it's about crack. So I uh, got a bid on the pigeons for £100 <coughs> from Jim Braniff. And Jim came down and got the pigeons, thought he was coming for a kit of five or six. He left this house with 22 pigeons for £100 and every one of the 22 were out of my stock. And when I talk about sticking your neck on the lane, I can remember haunting him a little dark hen. And I said to him, Jim, you haven't won a race yet, but this pigeon will probably win you your first race. But you won't see her until about the fifth race. Uh, come the fifth race, Jim Brinoff won the race with that hen. That's what I mean about sticking your neck out. So I'm prepared to stick my neck out with this one. Future girl, phenomenal little eye pigeon, but smart little head and to me the best hens are small tidy pigeons and that's a tidy pigeon you'll get a good look at the eye hopefully Mick. but this is only a 15 pigeon it's only a baby there you are she just last flight up uh, look at the last three in that one Michael there's not two middle between the lengths of them so I'm going to give you a ring number 15 is 8 96627 look out for that's going to be one of our main hands. God will it. A hen with a bit of a turbo winner again, you know from the check. Uh, single tail father again, Michael. 
Nice swing. There's a lovely hen in the hand here. Uh, we just stalked her. We just stalked her right away. She never even seen a basket. Beautiful eyed pigeon, but has uh, the turbo check in her. And I want to put her through uh, the producer and hopefully young turbo later in the year. And we stalk those for ourselves. But once we take the first two off her, everything else is for sale after that, as I said, unless we're putting it for our own stock later in the year. But that's a, a lovely tight pigeon in the hand. I like these the pigeons that feel hard in the hand, like they've just done a bit of work. Now, bear in mind, these are stock pigeons, they don't fly out. But that pigeon feels like it's after coming back from training. And to me, a good stock pigeon will always hold a good body. Well, nice little pigeon that. Joby has a name on it. I don't know what it is, but uh, her number is uh, 09926. She's a 12T pigeon. That's typical of the pigeons we want to breed. And uh, when you get a look at the eye, you'll understand why they produce. And the last thing I'm going to show you from these one the babies. Blue white flight hen. Again, single tail fella. Uh, look at the gap between the wings. Uh, slight difference between the third last and second last here, but the last two are pretty much the same length. Good hen, this. Expect a lot from her. She's a 12T pigeon as well. 09993. This hen last year already produced the winner with the producer. They just we put them in and these two found one another and now the producer's on the ball but this hen has already had one set off them about three weeks ago. She'll have another fortnight and she'll go back to him again and we'll have another couple. As I say, she produced one hen there, it was in the money four weeks running, so we're gonna try that mating back again because if they do it once there's no reason they won't do it again. Well, this pigeon here, um one of the major studs. I actually came and bought a few Van der Beelies of us and we had a job not to part with his hand with him but as I said only because Joby was so adamant she wasn't leaving she didn't leave but uh, you couldn't blame anybody for wanting one like that. So there you go that's a quick look at the, the Van der Beelies not as extensive a background on the rest of it as the rest of them but you know they're pretty fresh to us uh, but there seemed to be a family of pigeons is doing it for us other people plenty of loads of other people before we even got them so uh, success breeds success, why not do, you know, don't be afraid to claim on the bandwagon, don't look for something new fangled that's going to be out of fashion next week. I get a chuckle sometimes on the internet, you see these fans here every other week, they're in Belgium and they're showing you, this is one of Dickie, this is, and this is one of Louis, this is whatever. If they went far enough back in the generations of the pedigree, they would see that they're, those people are banned direct from the original old fans that had the name and always done it. I got a great laugh. Um, I used to breed pigeons for John Jared here at one time for a year or two. I bred Keith Bose was from. And he presented me with the absolute cream of them. And one of the best laughs I got, there was a blue paid hen that took my eye. And I have a daughter over out there yet. But basically, this blue paid hen was of a pigeon called Bassey. Full Keith Bose was, it's in the pedigree. And when I looked up Bassey, Bassey was from two direct Desmond Matisse. But Desmond Matisse weren't mentioned in any of the Keys Bourgeois adverts or anything like that. It wasn't until you went back in the pedigree. Well, fair play to Keys, but he produced a phenomenal pigeon, but he produced it from the birds that came from another loft. But everybody reckoned, you know, Bassey, 100% Keys Bourgeois. So it shows you when you do a bit of history or do a bit of looking in it, you know, it's the same as Leo Herman's and the Coosters, whatever. Go back a couple of generations, see where the pigeons come from, you may get your eyes open. They're not criticising them, you know, cross best to best to get best results. A lot of people swear by that result. My gripe is the guys that done the spade work, they make these pigeons and make these other people famous, don't get the acknowledgement and the recognition that they deserve. So uh, that's off the right, brothers. That's off the Desmond Matisse. And I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did, and I hope you've got a bit of interest out of it. Any queries, just please get in touch. Thank you.